Thanks, Freak. A an extraordinarily dominating win there by Cloud9. It looks like they're just as hungry as ever for yet another North American championship. I got some housekeeping to do really quick. Prolly, I think C9 is going to win this. Oh man, what's your prediction? <laughs> oh, I got to throw that at him now. He got it in. He got it in. He got it in there <laughs> quick. That was oh. already my prediction. This is unfair. <laughs> I call him Mulligan. I'm taking a Mulligan on this one, boys. <laughs> Cloud9. Yeah. Let's oh, get let's that. let's get into the game though because we saw some some new picks compared to the last series. We finally saw Zed get through and high. I mean, he seemed to keep up with his skills on Zed as he used to be a Zed player, and he finally gets the chance to pull it out. Oh, he was super happy about that too. You could see him on the screen when he locked in. He's like, all right, stretching it's his time to do there. time to do some Zed stuff. Yeah, because I mean, yeah, back in the day, that was his champion. It has you know a way of engage, a way of assassin, and it has a good like lane presence. So it's basically like High's perfect champion. Not to mention, you only need two, three items on Zed to be effective. So the fact that he's not a supportive mid, but he uh, kind of gives a lot of lane CS to his other teammates, actually really complements that playstyle. Yeah, and that was just a huge just display of power mobility mechanics from High. And the fact that he's the shot caller of the team, he's the captain, he moved all around the map very early on. It was almost a perfect game from them, too. And Zyrene, talk to me a little bit about the choice to go with the lane swap in this matchup. As we saw standard lanes across the board in the in the previous one, here we see the lane swap, but we had one team, Curse, choosing to go with the double jungle, while Cloud9 chose to throw their support and their top laner in the duo lane against the AD carry and support of Curse. Yeah, it was really interesting because they didn't give up too much dragon control by doing that, because then you could just stall it out, have Tristana run from top lane down there if the dragon was started at all. But they also had a gold generation item on Lemonation's Morgana, and he took some CS for himself too. So they had about a 500 gold lead before that dragon fight even started that they did all show up to. So the lane swap was very intelligent by Cloud9 to do. And Sneaky is kind of the MVP of that team this split because he's been very consistent. So why not put some free farm on him where he doesn't have to go up in a matchup? You mentioned the dragon fight. I want to get into that as a replay because I think we're going to get pretty in-depth with it as it was a huge turning point in the game and kind of where everything fell apart for Curse. So we're going to pull that up onto your screen here and probably take it away. Yeah, so this is uh, so Curse starting the dragon, and um, we can start rolling it. Right now, we watch Balls. He starts backing up to his turret because he wants to get that TP off. And Balls actually gets the early TP, which is very advantageous. And then we're going to freeze it right, right about now. It? So Quas responds immediately because he knows his team's already dedicated to Dragon and they need to do it. The problem with this is they have four people around the Dragon and Quas is technically overextending, although he's not in there. So at this point, they need to either turn and help Quas or they need to cut and run and Quas needs a flash out and they need to pick a new engage. But we can roll right now and notice that they do neither. They actually have Quas flash out, but they stay in the fight. And they actually have Boyway go in before they can relocate. And now they're already at a health disadvantage, and they use their Yasuo ult that got exhausted. So they basically are down two ultimates to start this fight. And at this point, it's just Cloud9 trying to clean up after, you know, they take damage from Dragon, so they're already weaker on Curse's side. Yeah, when you put yourself in that situation, I was thinking about the hypothetical there. Quas, he could have just stayed where he was because three people clumped up on him. They missed the cocoon. If he had ultied himself, it would have been a three man, possibly four man ultimate there for Yasuo, which he ended up only using on high. And you were talking about this where you can't blow up a Zed unless everybody is on him because he has, just has so much mobility. He's very slippery at this part, this part in the game because nobody's got bur uh, burst potential. There we go. Words. Now, yeah, right. <laughs> now, hindsight being 2020, of course, we can come up with a lot of, of different scenarios that Curse could have played out in that situation. Probably as someone who has played in high intensity games like this, team comms. Is it time for everyone to be quiet and one person is making the calls? Or is it relying on instinct there and trusting that Quas will make the right decision? Uh, how does that go? Uh, I'm not quite sure how Curse's voice comms go or who's the shot caller for that. But uh, in complexity side, if that's something that we happen or we happen to run upon, we'd notice West calling out he's TPing in, and then at that point it'd be either me or Kez yelling, "We need to help West, or we need to run from this, or we need to burn Dragon and then get out." So it's kind of like the second you see your teammate in a dangerous position, someone just has to yell out what to do, and no one questions it. Everyone has to follow it. I mean, at this point too, you're down three kills, a dragon, you are already in a bit of a gold deficit, and things just start to crumble around you as a team. And I, that is harsh maybe to say to Curse, but they're in a pretty tough spot now mentally to try and get back into this series. What are the first steps to rebuilding that? 
Well, first of all, you have to come to terms with you just gave away the largest gold lead at 20 minutes this summer split to the team you are going to continue to play this best of five against. They surrendered, so they didn't have to continue to go through that burden. They can regroup, they can give themselves some time, and they don't have to keep taking that beating. So I think surrendering actually was a kind of a good idea by them in that regard to keep their mentality up and keep their uh, outlook positive. I feel like the surrender definitely it, it puts a stop to, I guess, the pain of, yeah. of having to live through it. Although there has been arguments made for prolonging the game so that you have the opportunity to talk about, yeah, well, prolonging the game maybe to win, but uh, prolonging also <laughs> just for the opportunity to talk about what you're going to do in the, in the next game. Because now, Curse, they've only got a short period of time to reformulate an entire pick ban phase and then a play strategy on the other side of the map. So my final question to you probably is, what are we going to see in picks bans? Are we going to see that Zed off the board? Uh, I think it'd be really smart to ban Zed. I feel like that's just a high staple champion, similar to Bjergsen, Syndra, and Zed. It's just, regardless of if he's played it recently, you know he knows the ins and outs of that champion, and it's really scary for him. So I could foresee maybe a first pick Zed on uh, Curse's side. Maybe that, maybe a Tristana and try to pull it mid. So I think they actually have a lot of room. I don't think that game decides what they need to do. They still have another game or two games to lose before they're out. So I think they have a lot more room to kind of, you know, do what they want to do. The series is definitely far from over. I will be curious to see what Curse decides to come out swinging with this next time around. But we'll see if Cloud9 can keep that momentum going in game two versus Curse. The action continues after this. Yeah, can I go? Kill Lula? Careful. Yasso, 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 Go, 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 go. Thrash, 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 thrash. Yo, yo, Lulu, Lulu. We can drag, we can drag. Go fast, go fast, go fast. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, yeah. Here's my fight. Nice, nice. Good job. Good job, guys. Dominic gets spewed. Boy still wants in, though. He's into the battle. High, low on health. But he shoots back up north. The kill goes to Meteos. Oh, another binding. Soul individually binding lands on the Dominate, though. And that's one kill picked up. Now Cop is being chased down. The flash on in dies for the death part. 